so the next part of class, we're going to be once again moving around. Across the U.S., school districts are grappling with teacher shortages. It has a major impact on students, but also on educators. Um, workload has increased significantly. Colorado is just one state feeling the limited numbers. Personally, at my school right now, we are short one special ed teacher, and next year that's going to be two special ed teachers if we can't hire. All of our high schools are missing a special ed teacher at the moment. Lori Cooper is now a special ed instructor in Colorado, but her teaching journey started in Florida. So I had to take four tests there to prove I was worthy of being a teacher, pay all my licensure things in Florida, and I got a five-year professional certificate. She moved from Florida to Tennessee, where they accepted her previous tests and license. But when she came to Colorado, that wasn't the case. But it's at great time and cost to have to do these. Each test costs between $150 and $180 that I have to take. They take many hours, plus all the practice, and it's hard. I mean, it, it makes you feel like they don't trust you as a professional. Cooper put in the time, the money, took the tests, and got the proper licenses required in Colorado. But Colorado State Representatives Megan Lukens and Mary Young say other teachers in similar situations end up never teaching. It's part of the reason the state is now part of the Interstate Teacher Mobility Compact. It streamlines the process and eliminates barriers um, for teachers that want to move into the state of Colorado. Already we have, we believe, nine other states moving forward with legislation like we are, and 10 states are required for the compact to be initiated. State Senator Janice Marchman says that so far, Utah and Colorado are the first to legally enact the compact, in which states agree to recognize each other's licensing. Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Georgia, Florida, Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana are all working on it, and it's making progress with support from both parties. This is a pretty non partisan issue. This is really a practical issue of getting gaps filled in states and getting people to work. So we need to be able to get these states on board and say, hey, look, you pass those tests in your state. All right, that's good enough for us. As an English language development teacher, John German explains how he could easily be a part of the pool of people with licenses who aren't in a classroom. After 28 years teaching in Japan, he recently moved back to the States. For the first eight years, I taught in a high school, and then I moved on to higher education. I had all my teaching credentials in Japan. Uh, like I said, I was, a, I, was a, I was a tenured professor. He says he sent over 50 applications, but most schools didn't have the time or patience to wait for him to get his licenses, except the school he currently teaches at. If they hadn't rolled the dice on me, I would be doing something else right now and not applying nearly three decades of teaching experience. Moving is such an integral part of our society. Whether it's for something like family or a spouse's relocation, the president of the Colorado Education Association, Amy baca Olert, says it's not worth losing great educators. You know, we have many people who are passionate about wanting to work with students, but the barriers, the things that are put in place to prevent them from coming into the classroom are sometimes just too much. From the politicians to the teachers, they say this won't work unless bigger issues like pay and affordable housing are dealt with. But they point out this is a start to a bigger change. Jesse Cohen, Scripps News, Denver.